Well, 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 how good was that B-roll intro? Did you guys like it? Hit that like button if you did and let me know in the comments below. And if you did not like it, hit that dislike button twice. That should probably settle things out, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to the channel guys. Hope you all are keeping safe and doing well wherever you are. A few weeks back, I asked you guys what sort of other videos you'd like to see on the channel apart from the Tone Quest series, which to be honest has been the main highlight of this channel and this is how you guys responded. So in case you haven't guessed it so far, this video is going to be all about the studio tour and some of the gear that you've been seeing on the channel and some of the things you haven't seen so far. We've got a lot of things to cover, so go get yourself a cup of coffee or a tea if you prefer and sit down relax enjoy the video let's do this now hold up obvious disclaimer this video is not sponsored by any means whatsoever by any of the products that i'm going to cover i've purchased all of these products with my own hard-earned money <laughs> so make sure you keep that in mind when you hear me talking good or not so good about any of the products in the video cheers let's do this First, let me show you the room where all the action really happens. It's actually a pretty small setup as you can see. Pretty much of everything that you see on the channel has been shot here inside this small room. And this also means that I have limited space and angles to shoot from as well. So getting creative sometimes with the angles does really help a lot in shooting the videos. Now, this is the table where most of my setup lies on. It's made of pure timber and I really like the wood grain on the top. But it wasn't like this when I bought it. Believe it or not, I bought this table for just $20 from a kind gentleman over at Facebook Marketplace. And I paid more for the shipping than the table itself, actually, to be honest. But it had a bunch of scratches and marks on the top and I spent a good amount of time sanding it and coating it again to give this kind of a look that you see. Next up is my trusty guitar, the Ernie Ball Music Man JP15. I've had this guitar for over four years now. And what can I say about this guitar? It's been a life-changing experience since I bought it. Not only does it look spectacular from every and each angle that you look at it from, but it plays like a dream too. Out of the entire JP series, I personally think that this is the best guitar that Ernie Ball has ever built. Now, there are tons of reviews online, so I won't spend much time here, but I can tell you some basic specs of the guitar. It's got a 17-inch fretboard radius, which is practically flat, and it makes playing solos so, so much easier. It has a roasted maple neck, an African mahogany with roasted maple top, shallow locking tuners, and medium jumbo profile stainless steel frets. It's got the DiMaggio Illuminator pickups and a piezo pickup mounted directly into the bridge, toggled by a three-way selector, and it's also got a three-way pickup selector and standard volume, tone, and piezo volume control knobs. It also has a unique truss rod wheel, which can be turned to adjust the truss rod easily, which is absolutely incredible and very, very handy. I've always been a fan of the Ernie Ball Slinky Strings and it's got the regular Slinky Strings on this guitar. Should you buy it? Absolutely yes. These, Although these things are fairly expensive no matter where you live, but trust me, these are worth every penny, at least for me. Next guitar that I want to talk about is the Fender American Deluxe Stratocaster. Now, I've always wanted that single coil sound and that's one of the main reasons I bought this guitar. The other reason is that it has the compound radius. In my opinion, this guitar has its own unique sound, which is what makes it so desirable for me at least. Although I wish the pickups were a little more hot and sound like the you know vintage style pickups that Fender used to have earlier, but it is what it is. It's got the standard noiseless N3 pickups on there from Fender, a compound radius neck, and I've got Ernie Ball regular slinky strings on there as well. You still don't see it out at the moment because it's undergoing a string change. <laughs> Should you buy it? Well, with the new series that Fender is coming out with, the Deluxe series guitars are getting harder and harder to find. But if you like, really like flatter necks and not the usual nine and a half inch fretboard radius that Fender still sticks to, don't know why Fender still does that, then the compound radius neck is surely something that you should be checking out. The final guitar that I wanna show you guys is this acoustic, it's lying back there over there, you can see it. It's a Jasmine by Takamine, and it's been my favorite acoustic since many, many years. I've recorded many singles using this guitar and it sounds absolutely incredible. Fun fact, I went to help a friend buy a guitar but ended up buying this one for myself. It was actually love at first sight. I picked it up, strummed a chord, and just there was no looking back. <laughs> Next is the thing that started the whole Tone Quest series. 
the mighty XFX2. Now, this is not the XL edition, but the standard XFX2. And I absolutely love this unit and it has been an incredible journey with it so far. Now, I've never owned any real amps in my life. So after getting this thing, I really, really felt like I was actually playing through an actual amp. The dynamics and the real feel on this thing are out of this world. And there's, it's nothing like I've anything that I've ever played through in my actual life. Again, enough reviews out there, so I won't waste much of your time. All I can say is it's a fantastic unit. Should you buy it? Hell yes. If you can get one, get it today. Or if you can get your hands on the XFX3 or the FM3, even better. But I hear there's some, you know, weight listing happening on that. Next up is my trusty recording interface, which is the Motu Ultralight MK3 Firewire interface. Now, it may be an overkill for a simple home studio like mine, but it has been my go-to unit for many years. I think I've had this for more than 10 years, uh, to be honest, and it's never disappointed me. It's got standard knobs and switches in the front and a decent size LCD display to see what settings you are tweaking, but the rear side is where the main deal is. It's got two mic or guitar inputs that are equipped with high quality preamps and all the features that you need to record any mic or guitar with excellent sound quality. These two inputs are equipped with its own 48 volt phantom power switch and three stage pad switches as well. Again, not going into much detail, but it's got a load of other inputs and outputs at the back. Firewire, SPDIF, MIDI ports, absolutely everything at the back. As I said, probably overkill for the home studio setup, but I love this thing and yes, it's kind of fairly heavy. Should you buy it? To be honest, when I bought this thing, there weren't plenty of other USB options around, but there are plenty of other economic interfaces to choose from today. But Motu has a class of its own, so consider all your options before making your purchase. Moving forward, the studio monitors. These are my Tapco S5 active monitors. Again, I've had these for years and I absolutely love them. If you don't know about Tapco, it was a sister concern of Mackie, which has been known to create state-of-the-art audio products. I brought these from a friend back in the day and they have never ceased to amaze me. The sound is flat and they have really helped me a lot in creating the tones and the mixes that you hear on the channel. They have a one inch tweeter and a 5.25 inch driver, which makes, which is good enough for a sort of a home studio setup like mine. Should you buy them? Um, well, these are not available anymore as far as I know, but if you can find someone selling them, in my opinion, these are absolutely worth having. Next up, the microphone. The Rode NT1A condenser microphone has been my go-to mic for recording anything related to voice or the acoustic guitar. It's a very decent mic for the price that you're paying. It comes with its own shock mount, cables, and other goodies from Rode. Again, as it is with other things, this has been with me for many, many years. And all the voiceovers that you hear on the channel, and in fact, the one right that you're hearing right now, are recorded on this. I've got this mounted on a cheap boom arm that I purchased locally here and it really helps to move it out of the way when you're not needed, not needing to record it. Fun fact, it says here that it's made in Australia, which means at the time I bought this, I was in India and I had no idea I would be shooting this video in Australia one day, which is amazing to be honest. Should you buy it? Absolutely yes. Keep in mind that this is a condenser mic and it would need phantom power from your recording interface to work properly. Up next, the headphones. Now, these are a crucial part of my setup and I spend most of my time creating tones on these purely to keep the sound levels inside my house at a sane level. I've always been a Sony guy and these are the much acclaimed Sony Professional Studio Monitors MDR7506. They fold up nicely and are pretty compact to carry around and to store as well. Also adjustable from the side to suit your comfort. 40 mm drivers which are pretty comfortable to my ears and the cushion is pretty soft so it helps in recording for longer hours as well. It's got this old telephone like cord which helps to move a pretty much fair distance. Comes with the standard headphone jack and a attachable 1 4th inch jack as well. Should you get it for yourself? Um, headphones are really a personal preference and everyone's ears are different. I recommend you try a few headphones before you consider buying any one of these. Okay, let's look at some gear that I use for shooting these videos. First and foremost is the camera. This is the Sony RX100 Mark III camera and I'm shooting this camera using my phone since I cannot shoot the camera with the camera because I'm shooting the video with it. It's a pretty compact and powerful camera for its size. It can shoot in 1080p up to 60 FPS and that gives you decent enough slow motion shots like the ones you saw in the B-roll at the start of this video. Seriously, how good was that B-roll? I loved it. 
And yes, those were all handheld shots and I do not use a gimbal at all. The camera has a flip screen, which is one of the main reasons I bought it. And it really helps in seeing yourself when you plan to do a video or probably, you know, record yourself as well. The shooting mode is pretty versatile in the camera and it allows you to adjust pretty much everything from the shutter speed, ISO, aperture, yada, yada, everything, all the shebang. As with any camera, it takes a while for you to understand the best settings to shoot at and that is true for even me. You can see in the side by side comparison clip here how much the right settings can affect your camera. Both of these are shot at 1080p at the same light, well almost the same light but different codec settings inside the camera. Should you get one? Mm, it's a great camera for its price but uh, I would recommend better cameras that are out there now. For example, the same model has many more upgrades and now Sony has come out with Mark 7, I think, which is far, far more better. I'd recommend going for something 4K now because why not? It's 2020. Plus, this camera does not allow video streaming output over USB. So in case you want to use this for live streaming, getting something like the M50 Canon would be a better option. Next is the lighting, which is the biggest aspect in getting a good shot. You may have a great, great camera, but if you do not have the right lightning, your shot's not gonna look good. Mm -hmm. So for my main light, I use this Fobitech softbox, which is, uh, again, I bought it secondhand and it's a pretty decent light to fill up the room. But since my surroundings are pretty white in terms of the wall and the room is fairly small, too much light does cause it to kind of look kind of washed out, to be honest. Hence, I bought this honeycomb grid from Amazon, which helps in making the light more directional and really helps to focus the light onto one area like me and my guitar, for example. As a result, the background does pop out more with the other lights that I place in there. Should you get one for yourself? Um, absolutely, yes, you need a softbox light of some sorts in case you want to get good results in your videos. There are plenty of pretty cheap ones out there available online and you know, you don't have to spend a fortune to get one really, unless you want really good ones, then you should go for something like Aperture. And that brings me to my second light, which is the Aperture MC. Looks small, doesn't it? but does, don't let its size fool you. It's a pretty powerful light and can easily light up a subject with fair amount of light to get a decent shot. You can tame the intensity to your needs and even go down to 1% if you need to. Plus, it's RGB. You can choose whatever hue color you like and in most of my videos, you can see it in the background. It's pretty much there in the background as well. It's got very, very strong magnets at the back to hook onto any metal surface like a light stand or a tripod. And it's easily one of my best investments that I've made in terms of lighting. It also comes with a soft gel pad, which allows you to tame the light into a much softer light source, perhaps like a soft box, perhaps. Comes with a nice pouch as well. Should you get it? Yes, I feel this is one of the best portable lights that you will find in the market at the moment. And it's fairly affordable, if not very expensive. The only issue is the availability. I could not find this light within Australia and every shop had a huge list of back orders to be fulfilled. So what's up with that aperture? I had to order this from Australia, Australia, which makes the wait time a bummer, but trust me, it's worth it. Get one for yourself. The other light that I use is this RGB strip light that I have glued to the side of my table and it adds a bit of color to the background and makes it pop out a little bit more. Now, there are tons of these available everywhere, but if you invest in a slightly better quality one, you'll get better results and they will definitely last you longer. Last few pieces of gear. I feel these are important as they contribute and help a lot in my videos in terms of ease. I want to mention this keyboard, which, uh, which is the Logitech uh, wireless keyboard. It's fairly ergonomic and other than that, it's just helping your hands, it serves a very good purpose when I'm shooting videos. You see, I'm usually facing my back towards the computer when I shoot and to trigger the recording for my takes, uh, this really helps a lot. I can move it around to any part of the room like I have it right now with me. And I don't have to turn around every time to take and start or stop a take, to be honest, which really helps a lot. So it's pretty handy to have a wireless keyboard in case you're planning to shoot and record your takes and you're not near your computer. For the tripods, now I use these two. The first one is a basic tripod that I bought from Amazon. Nothing fancy at all. The second one is this mini tripod that I got here. It really helps in, you know, if you want to get a shot from your, for yourself from the table and you can get a decent angle with the small tripod. It's compact, portable and, you know, legs can extend so you can get that increased height as well. Last but not the least is the practice Marshall amp that I purchased a while back. Of course, it's nothing like the real deal, but it's a great amp to practice offline or in your bedroom. It can be run via a 9 volt battery or via DC power and it's got a fair bit of output to be able to hear yourself. 
It can also do decent clean and distorted tones, but it does not have any effects built into it, which is kind of actually good for me as I usually practice to clean up my distortion playing along with a metronome, so it really helps. Should you get one? For the price, I think it's a good piece of gear to have, purely due to this portability and ease of access, no matter where you are. But if you're looking to get dial-in tones on these, and this is not something you should be getting. It's a practice amp, and I believe it's advertised that way as well. So that's pretty much it, folks. That's all of the gear. Phew, that was a lot of things to cover, and if you're still sticking around in the video, I'm sure you liked whatever you saw. So make sure you give that video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed by now, please go ahead and do so. It really helps to support the channel. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.